Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video today, I'm going to discuss footwear and my choice for the upcoming Cape Wrath Trail. I'm going to try and redo. Yes, it was a nightmare the last time I attempted it. If you haven't seen it, watch my other videos. I ended up with the blisters from hell. And this time I think I might have remedied the problem, or at least I hope so. So we're going to have a chat about what I've decided to use and why. And yes, just enjoy this lovely morning. Not sure about the wind turbines though. I suppose needs must and all that. Okay folks, let's talk about footwear. Now, on the Cape Wrath Trail, I had decided to try the Innovates and it was the rock lights. And I ended up with bad blisters, really bad blisters. I don't know if it was a manufacturing issue to do with the rock lights because... And what's not helping either is these boots because inside, there at the back, the stitching... You hear this? The threads are really coarse where the Gore-Tex liner is and honestly it's like a cheese grater really really quite bad and also I decided to use Dexshell Gore-Tex socks so maybe it was a combination of both I don't know but I do know that the heel on the rock lights it was quite bad now I had worn those boots before I'd done the Cape Wrath I'd worn them for many many miles to try them out to make sure they would be okay obviously I didn't test them when they were wet and that was my downfall I should have done that but anyway yes they failed me and at the time before I went even in the morning before I left I was going to wear my normal boots or the boots I've worn for years and it's the Salomon X Ultra Trex I have worn these for wild camping backpacking DIY walking the dog going to the shops, just wear them all the time. And I've worn these, or this particular pair, for about the last year and a half. And I wore a pair before that as well. And the only reason I swapped them out was because the sole was basically worn out, much like these ones. And I have found them to be a really good boot. Online, there are many people who recommend using trail runners or lightweight shoes ideally ones without Gore-Tex and just embrace the fact that when you're doing something like the Cape Raft Trail you're going to get wet feet. I did give it a go trying uh, the ultralight shoe route, didn't work for me, didn't like it. Yeah, I, I see where they're coming from, it's just a personal thing, you really need to try it and see how you get on with it but it didn't work for me. Doesn't mean it won't work for you though so yeah, maybe give it a bash. I didn't like it. Now the other thing that many will say is that boots are heavy, you know, it's better to have a lightweight shoe, blah, blah, blah. Some boots are very heavy. It's just picking a boot that covers the bases and doesn't weigh an absolute ton. Now these Sauconies that I use for trail running are lightweight. They come in at 345 grams for one shoe. So they're very lightweight and I had considered using these for the Cape Wrath and then decided against it. <laughs> Instead, I've went and bought another pair of my old favourites I've got on just now, the Salomon X Ultra Trex. And this is one of the brand new ones I've got here, which I am in the process of breaking in, which we'll talk about as well. Now this comes in at 540 grams, so you know, 340 odd, 5, you're talking 100 odd grams of difference, what, <laughs> yeah. I've worn this particular set of boots here for about a year and a half, two years, and it's still in good condition. Remarkably, nothing is splitting, and it was the same with my other boots, there's no seams coming away, there's no stitching coming away, the front the stitching is still intact as well as the front protection 
it's just been a great all-round boot. I think it's the lack of stitching on it and all the fancy fabrics and such likes that made it last as long as it has. It's just a great boot and as I said, because of the soft leather, it just moulds very, very quickly. You could get these broken in in a matter of yeah, a day, if not hours, to be honest. The one thing I would change is the laces. The laces that come with the new boots, I find them a bit difficult to tighten up. They don't kind of cinch down as well as some softer aftermarket ones I've bought. But that's just, uh, yeah, that's just one wee niggle I have with them. But honestly, when you look at these uh, side by side, they're not too bad. After a year and a half of use, and obviously the tread is worn right down, but yeah, after a year and a half of use, they've been absolutely excellent. It's just, yeah, I can't believe how well they do last. Yeah, it's, it can be a bit skittish on wet ground or steep grass and, you know, slimy rocks and things like that. But then again, a lot of shoes are going to be much the same. You just have to be aware that they can be a bit, yeah, a bit skittish at times, is the word I would use, and just tread carefully. But on the whole, I have used these for the last maybe four years. I've, I think I've got through a pair about, or a pair lasts, about a year and a half or so. They're a very light and yeah, waterproof boot as well, I would say. Now, they're going to get wet at some point on something like the Cape Wrath if you obviously submerge them. But what I've found, and this is my third pair I bought, but going by my last two pairs and the ones I'm wearing at the moment, I have still not had wet feet. As long as I haven't obviously submerged the boot completely. But walking through wet grass, walking through streams, puddles, all that kind of stuff. Winter, uh, walking in the snow, never had an issue with wet feet. You will see that I often wear my Fall Raven Abisco trekking tights or my Alp kit running tights, the black ones. And the reason I use tights like these now is because I want to keep ticks out of my, well, away from my legs, getting to places you don't want them to get to, I just try and avoid ticks now, I really do. So what I will wear is tights to try and eliminate that. And because of the high top of these boots, it allows me to put my tights over the top of the boot and then kind of cinch it in with these gaiters. It also stops all the kind of crap and stones and pebbles and everything getting into your footwear as well. I just think it's a really good setup and it really does stop anything kind of travelling where you don't want it. I also treat my trousers with uh, permethrin just to try and keep the ticks at bay as well. And I did get a tick bite about maybe three years ago. And matter of fact, I think I could probably show you it now. And this tick bite has never healed. And you might have seen in some of my other videos where I was, I've been out of puff and aching and I suffer a lot from muscle pain. That was murder. I really, really uh, had a hard time with that there. My God, uh, I've done about five miles and God knows how long it's taken, a long time. A lot longer than it should have. Just legs, just killing me. And I found out online that people that have had Lyme disease or got Lyme disease suffer from a lot of uh, muscle aches and pains. And when I've been doing a lot of my hill walking, I'm having to stop all the time for a breather. And it's not a fitness issue. Uh, and I was really quite concerned. I went to my doctor, I got my uh, the arteries and the veins of my legs checked. They're fine. I'm fat. It's just so many tests I've had done. The only thing that come up in all the blood tests continuously was a high 
white blood cell count. So it's like I was constantly fighting an infection. And I believe that tick bites like that one that I've had has been the reason I've had a lot of medical issues. And I believe that's what it was. So now on, I'm doing everything I can to avoid ticks. I'm getting blisters on blisters. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, just see the top of my heel, maybe. Oh. Yeah, not good, not good. So the upshot of this video, let's get to the point. I'm taking the Salomons. I should have worn them last time and I wouldn't have had the issue I had. And I'm definitely wearing them this time. However, if it all goes wrong, it's going to be an interesting explanation video. But no, I really rate these. I think they're a really good boot. They pair up well with my tights and gaiters. They're great for walking in. They mould to your feet very quickly. I've just never, ever had an issue. I've never had a blister. I've just never had an issue with them. Again, the only thing I would say is just be careful on some terrain and be aware of their limitations. And that's it. That's what I'm wearing. I hope to get another tent review done before I set off and hopefully it will be the tent that I plan to take with me so I can show you all what it's all about. I'm really looking forward to doing this walk. I just want to get out and yeah, a couple of weeks away in nature. It'll be fantastic. So stay tuned. Maybe like this video. Maybe not. Maybe give me a thumbs up. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. But as always, thank you for watching. And until the next time, take care.